So when it comes to nutrition, today we have plant-based nutrition, we have nutrition from meat and meat products and dairy, and there are debates all across the world on what's best, what's worst for the human body. Although we aim for, for balance, what's important in understanding plant nutrition <clears throat> is that, of course, plants are great for your body. Plants are great. They're rich in vitamins, minerals, everything that your cells need. So you see the human body is composed of trillions of cells, and these cells require nutrients. You have them in the form of macronutrients and micronutrients. So macronutrients include your carbohydrates, your fats, your proteins, of course, good quality carbohydrates, fats, and protein. And then you have your micronutrients, which are, ba which are like your vitamins, right from your A, D, E, B, K, all of those things, to your trace minerals like magnesium, copper, boron, iron, magnesium, potassium, all of these things. So this is nutrition. These are nutrients that power trillions of cells. So you either have the right nutrients reaching these cells and giving you the right power, the right energy, and the right uh, immunity, or you have the wrong nutrition or insufficient nutrients reaching your cells, which cause low immunity, more toxification, and eventually disease, and eventually death. So that's why nutrition is so important, especially when you're sick, or it becomes your main tool when you're trying to prevent the onset of disease. Think about it. Everything that you eat is either feeding disease or it's healing you. It's feeding disease or it's preventing you. So when it comes to eating plants, have you ever wondered why even extremely fit people, I'll give you an example, the days that I have hummus or the days that I have a lot of raw vegetable juice, you have this bloated feeling happening in your gut. Sometimes you'll have a little bit of flatulence. It's normal, it's natural, because there's something called anti-nutrients in plants in grains, in lentils, and in legumes. So nature has its own way of protecting itself. So a seed has to protect itself from you know, predators and insects, so they produce something called an anti-nutrient to protect themselves. Now these same anti-nutrients get into our body. We're getting great nutrition from it, but they also have anti-nutrients that block the absorption of certain vitamins and minerals in the human body. So for example, you have phytic acids in nuts and seeds and certain grains. You have tannins, which are also found in certain foods and certain teas. So teas are healthy for you, but if you have it too close to a meal, the tannins block the absorption of iron from your meal into your body. <clears throat> you have lectins, which are found in your lentils and legumes and your grains as well, and you have protease inhibitors, which basically block the absorption of protein in the human body. And then you have calcium oxalate, so you know so many people say be careful of how much green leafy vegetable or spinach that you eat because you have the formation of calcium oxalate in the human body. These are all anti-nutrients. It comes with nature. There's a way around it. It doesn't mean that we jump from vegetarian to non-vegetarian. Absolutely not. There's a way around everything. And that way is taught to us by nature. So that's the reason why we soak our nuts and seeds to remove the phytic acid. There are different ways of removing all these anti-nutrients. Some of these can be soaked. Some of them can be washed. Some of them can be boiled. Some of them can be sprouted. And some of them can be fermented. So when you go back into the traditional days where we would soak our grains and soak our pulses for almost 18 to 24 hours, the reason was to remove all of these inhibitors, all of these anti-nutrients, so that number one, our bodies find it easy to digest. Number two, we absorb more of the nutrients and vitamins rather than less of it. So today we have people who just wake up and decide what they're going to cook. They soak it for an hour and then we eat it and then we have gas and we have flatulence, we have acidity. And these lectins that we speak about, these anti-nutrients can also damage your gut lining, which is why people who have weak guts, people who have autoimmune disorders who have weak guts, there are a lot of lectins from the food that we eat that pass across the gut lining into your blood. And these lectins are not supposed to be in your blood. So your immune system rises up and starts attacking these molecules, these lectins, and that's what the autoimmune response is. These lectins are supposed to be digested or flushed out from your body through your stool. So when we have weak guts, sometimes weak guts can be caused when we do not wash or do we, we do not soak our grains the right way. The moment you sprout a grain, you change that process. The anti-nutrients actually become more powerful nutrients. The same way with nuts and seeds. You actually improve the nutritional value of nuts and seeds when you soak them. 
and likewise when you ferment them. So we, when we look at lactose intolerant people, a lot of them can have lactase. They can't have direct forms of milk because they don't have the enzyme to digest lactose. But they have the enzymes which are different to break down lactase which is fermented. So some people can't have milk but they can have yogurt, they can have buttermilk, they can have chas, they can have paneer without that impact because the fermentation process has changed the anti-nutrient or the form of enzymes to be utilized. So that's why we see the same thing happens. A lot of people are not gluten intolerant. They just have a weak digestive system that do not have the right enzymes or the power to break down gluten. So by just removing gluten, it's like a band-aid effect. You're not getting to the root cause, which is a weak digestive system and asking your body, why can't I break down wheat? Why can't my pancreas produce the right amount of enzymes to break down wheat? So we got to look at the root cause of the problem, even when it comes to holistic medicine, even when it comes to nutrition. So all of our grains, our rice, our nuts and seeds, you want to look at it, you want to look at soaking it. The tougher the legume, like for example, rajma or kidney beans or chana, you want to look at at least a 16 to 18 hour soak period. So first you soak it in warm water, then you wash it, and then you soak it in normal room temperature water, preferably overnight. This becomes easier for your digestive system and you end up absorbing more of the nutrients. There, there's no point eating healthy food if it has anti-nutrients and it's blocking out iron, magnesium, phosphorus, sulfur, boron, copper, all these little trace minerals which are required for the human body to work, for your immunity, for your heart function, for your liver function, for detoxification, for example. A lot of trace minerals are used to detoxify heavy metals in our body. Yes, we have heavy metals in our body, especially since most of our plastic bottles are contaminated, our, our air is polluted, we're breathing in fumes from cars on the road. We have some, we have some level of heavy metals in our body. So we should have the right trace minerals like magnesium, iron to bind with these heavy metals and detoxify from the human body. So that's it about anti-nutrients. Try to soak your nuts and seeds and which is why I'm so against people eating outside all the time. You know, I mean, restaurant food is great, but if you really think they're going to be soaking all their grains for 16 or 18 hours, which is why don't not eat out at restaurants, but you want to keep your frequency minimum or you want to aim at restaurants that really look at the quality of food, restaurants that truly care, not just about your taste buds, but about your health, your cellular health. That's when we can start eating out more often. But until then, just think about it. No one's soaking grains, no one's soaking anything. And we're just filling ourselves with anti-nutrients, which is why most people who, are, who eat restaurant food tend to bloat up, tend to have acidity, tend to have pancreatitis or inflammation of the pancreas. We've got to get back to nature and understand how nature works. A seed or a grain sprouts when water touches it, and that gives it new life. All the nutrition is in sprouted nuts, seeds, grains. So the more that you can sprout these things at home and then cook, it's better for your digestive system, and you're getting a whole load of nutrients from it. Have a great weekend, everyone. Until next time, eat smart, move more, sleep right, and breathe deep.